This video is a description of the Thai CLP long tail engine. And what you're looking at here is the business end. This is the proper course. And it's just attached to the shaft with a tapered uh, fitting. And then you see that curved part down below it is called the prop skeg. It helps to steer the prop in the water and it also uh, protects the prop from damage from the bottom of the river or lake or whatever. And it's very important that this shaft be seven feet long. And I cannot stress the fact more because if it's not seven feet long, you're not going to have a good setup. Now, uh, along this shaft, of course, there's an inner shaft and an outer shaft. Uh, the outer shaft is what you see here, and there's an inner shaft. And the inner shaft runs on five wooden or plastic bushings. Now, I can show you the screw here. See that little screw there, that little screw head there? What the little screw head does is screws into the plastic bushing. So the inner shaft never touches the outer shaft, but runs on these uh, about five inch long wooden or plastic bushings. And that centers everything. Now I got some still photographs I'll show you, but the business end here, maybe I don't know if you can see in the video, that's why I'm going to make some still ones for you, is there's this keyway here. Actually there's two keyways, 180 degrees apart. And that's the male part that slides into the female part. Okay, here's the PTO or the hub or whatever. And the, the outer shaft slides into this and it's bolted down here and clamped down. This is a clamp that holds the outer shaft down. And uh, the inner shaft goes in here and right about here there's this uh, a bolt fitting that provides the female uh, fitting that that shaft slides into. Now, uh, it's a loose fit. Uh, there's a little slop to it on purpose because that little slop uh, takes the load, the thrust load, off the bearing. That way, there's a give there. Nothing gets broken or nothing gets snapped off. And now, in here, I'm guessing right about here, is a bearing. Now this does not have to be a tapered bearing, it's just a ball bearing. And there's no real heavy load on it because you got that keyway. The keyway takes the load off it, so it's not a heavy thrust load on it, it's a rotating load on it. Which you just need a high speed roller bearing, round roller bearing thing, and this is the grease can. That provides some grease for it. And there's some grease provided here uh, as well. Now, right about in here, there's another fitting. And what that fitting does is it's a female fitting that slides onto your engine shaft. And it has a keyway just like any normal engine shaft on this kind of an engine here. This is the Honda GX360. This is the engine for the long tail. Unless you're getting real big. Now, uh, this is set up for the Honda. But uh, most of your engines have a four bolt setup that bolts on there. So if you were to buy this unit, you would just get this piece here. There's a little key that slides in, uh, into it. You slide that over the shaft, bolt it on down, and that's set. And you take the shaft, slide it in here, and lock it down, and you're ready to go. Now, uh, this is the way the tie setup is, and uh, most uh, Southeast Asian setups are done the same way. This CLP unit is a nice cast aluminum unit, it's not heavy, but you can make it out of whatever you want to make it out of. As far as the tail goes, the shaft for the tail, the inner shaft is soft steel. No reason at all to have any hard steel. In fact, it would not be good. And the outer casing and galvanized water pipe works just fine, but you can use whatever you want. So if you're going to make one of these yourself, what you got to consider is you need something like this. It can be square. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is. Whatever you can uh, use to hook it up. It can be square or round or the round one's hard to make. Uh, you might be able to make it out of square material and work out good. But you just need something to hook on the shaft onto the engine. And the thing to keep in mind is you need a, a piece inside here to slide all over the shaft of the engine with a keyway in it. 
and then you need a bearing here. It's a roller bearing that just rolls. There's no thrust load on it because you clamp down here. You clamp it down here, and you got that through here. You got that keyway. There's a female part in here, and the male part is on the end of the shaft, and that provides a little slop. It doesn't have to be a tight fit. You don't want a tight fit; it'll bind. So because there's no thrust load on the sh on the bearing. You don't need a tapered heavy duty bearing, you just need a high speed bearing that rotated about 3,500 RPM or thereabouts. But get the best one you can. And one thing you want to do, you, uh, you want to keep a lot of grease in there and everything. On a homemade unit, yeah, you're going to probably drop a lot of water in here. And you might want to drill some holes in the bottom to let the water flow on out. And then maybe consideration, uh, where on your boat that the engine is. Now what I do is I mount, I, I mount the engine inboard a little bit. I don't mount it on the aft transom because if you mount the engine on the, half, on the aft transom, like in a regular boat, what you're going to have is maybe the, too much weight on the uh, transom, the tail on it. You may use some balance in the front. And I'll put another video on the end of this that my brother Bill did. That shows a good detail of the inside and the keyway and everything. I wish I could show you that bearing in there, but I've never seen it. You gotta take it all apart to get at it, and I've had this for seven, eight years now, and I haven't had to take it apart. Uh, these uh, setups frequently last the life of the engine, which could be about 10 or 15 years, maybe even longer. So, this is the best setup you're gonna get. And I really advise you not to change it. I've seen people change it and I've seen the results. Some people put the universal, uh, uh, universal on the shaft and make it so it's bent. They think they're going to uh, gain something by that. If they don't gain, they lose. And the boat won't uh, be balanced and uh, it'll be pushing uh, the thrust of the prop will be pushing up and pushing the handle down on the tiller. And it's just simply no good. You want the seven foot shaft. Look at the videos on my website and see how my boat's going. You'll see what I mean. My boats are just skimming above the water with a 13 horsepower engine. So you can see uh, in the, the American engines or the Go Devils and stuff like that. You got the big V twins and stuff like that. And they're just using brute force. And it's not efficient. This is an efficient setup. And this is what you want to use. You can try what you want, but this is the way. There's oh, hundreds of thousands of these uh, throughout Southeast Asia, I guess. So you know it works. So that's about it for the uh, that I can help you out with for the uh, shaft and the setup, which most people think is the biggest part of it. But there's another part of it, and that's this. Now this is where the uh, this is what just the shaft that goes. The part of the shaft that goes uh, left and right. This is all it is. It's got some bolt holes in there. And this is what clamps onto your transom. You can make this any way you want. I mean, it's just a female part that the male part slides into. Allows you to turn it left and right. Now this, of course, doesn't look very, very good here, but it's, bol it's bolts onto there. And you can see that this allows it to pivot up and down and back and forth. And it's the front of the engine here. You can buy these engines in America, by the way. And this is where the handle slides in for the tiller. I don't have it right here, but it just slides right in here. And this is what you grab onto. You be grabbing onto it and you steer the boat that way. I'm now fixing this engine over to run on propane. It's a lot cheaper. That's what I'm working on today. But I wanted to get this video out to you. So there it is. I hope it helps you. What you got is the PTO we call it back on the, tra on the tractor. But actually what it is is just a hub. And this is the thing that goes on the engine. It's going to stick on here. You see? It's got a little slot in there. It's going right on here. Like this.